Howdy, Miss Anthony here. Today I'm going to talk to you about lumen prints and chemograms. So what are those two words, lumen print and chemogram? Lumen prints and chemograms are a form of cameraless photography art. So a lumen print uses photo paper with objects placed on top and then exposed to sunlight sunlight being the key variable there. A chemogram is much the same process except it opens up the possibility of reworking the chemical process while developing or prior to development. So all you need for both of these processes, photo paper, a source of light, fixer, water, and then really anything that you might want to use to create an image. It's a very chance-based, open variable project. Really, you can do this at any point. You can do it in the middle of the night, you can do it on a sunny day, you can do it on a cloudy day, you can do it in the rain. And you can do it with any kind of photo paper at any stage in the game. So even if your photo paper is expired, that's fine. In fact, that yields a more interesting result. So, I have here a lumen print because this is actually foliage and flowers taken from my garden, pressed onto photo paper, and exposed to the light outside for hours. And then this is a chemogram. I sprayed my paper with olive oil. Then I exposed it to the sunlight over the course of a day, slowly moving different objects around the page, sort of like dodging and burning in the darkroom. The only thing I really had control over was how long it was exposed in the light and at what angle I placed my objects. It's very chance-based. It's very much you get what you get. And it takes a certain level of letting go, to be okay with the artistic process, to let things happen. So, I'll walk you through the steps, and then hopefully you'll be able to try this on your own. Okay, we are down in my basement. It's kind of dark and creepy down here, but that's okay. Creepy we don't necessarily want, but dark we do for the first part of this process. It's important to be in a dimly lit area. So, for me, the basement works. Every other place in my house is bright right now because it's a gorgeous sunny day. It doesn't necessarily have to be pitch black though because we're kind of ruining our photo paper anyway. Alright, so over here next to me I've got a stack of photo paper. Everything from Ilford Multigrade RC Deluxe to fiber papers. I find that the RC Deluxe gives you the widest range of color. Remember, you can use any type of photo paper expired actually gets you cooler colors. Now for chemograms it's important to experiment with different materials. I've found that adding a resist to the photo paper yields a really interesting result. My resist has been things like nail polish, it's been things like maple syrup, been things like paint, and it's even been my favorite, olive oil. So, while I'm down here, I'm going to take out a piece of my photo paper. It's going to fog pretty immediately. That's okay. We don't have to worry about that. I'm going to make sure that the shiny side versus the flat side I'll do my work on the shiny side. Now, I've collected some dried flowers. I've collected some interesting papers to layer. I've even made some stencils to lay across. But right now, I'm going to begin by taking my paper and spraying my olive oil I like the spray kind of better. It gives you a, a really interesting pattern. So I'm going to spray either up 
and let it land, or if I'm feeling really wild, go right directly on. Maybe for this I'll use a stencil that I've already pre-cut, and I know that I'm going to get a really interesting and weird like image on this. Keep in mind, this is just like dodging and burning the dark room. So the areas that are covered are going to be lighter because they're less exposed to light versus these cutout areas where the light's able to penetrate no problem. So this will be one. I also know I want to prep a piece of paper for a more botanical style. So I am going to take a couple of my dried flowers and I'll grab another sheet of paper and I'll take this whole operation outside. Now, here's an interesting little factoid about using botanical elements for your photo paper. Photo paper reacts to light. What else reacts to light? That's right. Flowers, botanicals, celery, vegetables, fruit. All of these items react to light. Flowers, vegetables, fruit, they use light to create energy. So when you add these onto your paper that's already light sensitive, you get a really interesting chemical reaction. As light passes through the botanicals and into the paper, things shift. It's pretty cool. Alright, so I've got my materials. If you have it, it's also handy to have a big plate of glass. Mine's kind of gross because I've been doing lots of experimenting. You don't necessarily need something quite so big. You can go to the thrift store and get an old frame and take the glass out of the frame. Works just as well. Alright, so I've got my materials. Now I'm ready to go outside. Alrighty, so here we are outside. Brought this table up from the basement. It's a better choice than just laying your prints out on the ground. So if you've got a surface, I recommend using the surface. Now, place my objects down on my paper. You might not be able to tell, I'll zoom in in a moment, but paper immediately turned blue. Now, it's going to shift in color the longer you leave it out. So it's blue right now. If I come back in an hour, it'll be probably light pink, a couple more hours, deep purple, all the way to a brown that will lighten once developed. I picked some more flowers, fresh flowers from my garden, laid those out, I've got my stencil. It's a beautiful day now, just going to sip some iced tea and wait for the magic to happen. Here's a quick close-up of my layout and you can tell the paper is already turning blue see what it looks like in a couple of hours. Alright, checking on these a few hours later, you can tell that the paper has become a deep purple. Next step, developing. Okay, so I've left my prints outside for four hours. I think they're going to end up looking pretty cool. I've got some really interesting stuff going on here some deep purple, some light purple, and then over here with our botanical one, there are a lot of details that are coming out in these bright pink spots. We'll see if those stick around during the fixing phase. Notoriously, for luminography and for chemograms, the fixing tends to sort of disrupt what you're seeing. It kind of softens everything. Now, for fixing, not to worry, fix is the only chemical that you need. Now, I made this up uh, about a week or so ago, and you can tell if I hold it up to the light, it's kind of smoky. Um, you don't have to necessarily worry about that the way you might worry about cloudy fix during the more traditional printing process. It's not a deal breaker. In fact, one of the cool things about chemograms and lumen prints is that the things that are expired, the things that are maybe not necessarily 
readily used in a more traditional sense are much, much more utilized in this sense. Because you actually end up getting interesting reactions when you use it. So, over here I've got my fix and I've got water. Now, the process, I'm just going to dump this in, you want to fix your prints anywhere between 4 minutes to 20 minutes. 4 minutes for RC paper, which is what we're using today, longer for fiber-based paper. And then the wash, the wash can be anywhere between 10 minutes, if you have nothing on your print, all the way up to an hour or several. I say an hour or several because if you use things like oil on your print, nail polish, or other kinds of resist, the water's going to take time to lift that off your print. So, I will start by placing our botanical in the water, or excuse me, the fixer. And as soon as I do, a new process happens. I'm going to show you what that looks like here in a moment. So real quick, take this out for a second. You can tell that already some of our details have faded and some of our colors have changed. It's getting closer to a brown. You want to put that in fixer for about 30 seconds agitating and then you agitate for about 5 seconds every 30 seconds. So, almost there. I'm going to switch off my camera and point it so that you can see what that process looks like. Alright, I'm going to do the next one and I want you to pay close attention to how the colors change. So this is where it starts. And then you're going to see a pretty immediate shift. Remember, this is the one that has oil. Okay, so after leaving my prints out for four hours, fixing them for four minutes, and washing them for 20, here are the finished pieces. They're still wet, actually. So it really went in different directions than I thought it was going to. It's a very interesting process, and it can be done with rather limited materials. In fact, Likely, the best time to do this is at the end of the year. You're kind of low on materials, and there's more understanding of how dodging and burning works, and there's more understanding in your classroom of chemical reactions. It would be a great uh, lesson to combine with chemistry, for instance. All right, well, it has been a joy. It's a great way to spend a beautiful day outside and letting time and sunlight do its thing.